1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now, as to touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge, and knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. And if any man think that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be many gods and many lords, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. For some, with conscience of the idol, unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. But meat commendeth us not to God, neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worst. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see you which have knowledge sit at meat in an idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died? But when you so sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world stands, lest I make my brother to offend. Okay, a couple of quick points. First, this has nothing to do with clean and unclean meats. Um, just get that idea off the shelf. Uh, that's not what's being covered. It's only meats being offered unto idols, okay? So, second point is what happened in that age was there was no refrigeration. Any animal killed had to be eaten within a day or two, okay? Or preserved with uh, salt and jerky fight or whatever, but mostly it was eaten within a day or two. So, if the minor deity Habadaba Quack Quack, you could only sacrifice a cow's head, well, the everything from the neck to the tail and the hoofs and the hide and the meat, all of that got sold off. And if you think about it, that kind of paid for the head, which no one wanted anyway. Um, but you'd be able to get it at a discount in the shambles. So, hey, it's a bargain. Well, doesn't make any difference to the meat. But some people, if you were once a disciple of Habadaba Quack Quack, man, you just didn't want anything to do with that meat. Um, you wanted no, in any slight way, to have any association, and especially not with supporting the Habadaba Quack Quack uh, practitioners. No. You stayed away from it. And if one of your elders of your church, uh, of the true and living God, was eating meat that was sacrificed to have a quack quack, man, that would just grind. And that's what is being spoken of here. Not clean and unclean meats, but just this kind of weird first century practice when they didn't have refrigeration. All right. Back to Bible study.